wins on Sunday? Well, I think it's going to be a very high-scoring game. Um, I have the utmost of confidence in Wade Phillips that he will take away the running game of the New England Patriots because if you let them run the football and you let Tom Brady have time, you have no chance of beating them. So I believe Wade Phillips stops the run first. Secondly, the most important thing is that you must take Tom Brady's first option. You got to take that away from him. Make him clutch the ball, come down, go to two to three, and that's when Sue, Donald, uh, those uh, defensive linemen has a chance to get to Tom Brady. I'm going to say it's going to be 33-30. The Rams on the third line last second field goal from about 40-plus yards away, Skip. Um, what we've seen from Coach Belichick uh, against Kansas City, that he's unpredictable. He'll take the safety out of the middle of the field. He will bring guys that when he normally isn't do, uh, wouldn't do that. So I'm going to take the Rams in a very close ball game, Skip. Um, make them one-dimensional. And I can't believe I'm going to say this, Skip. Tom Brady's probably going to have another almost 500-yard passing day. But if you let them run it and you let Tom Brady throw it, you have zero chance of beating them. And I believe Wade takes the run game away, and they play well enough defensively, and they win 33-30. So, wait, you're trying to cover your bet by saying Tom Brady's going to throw for another almost record day, mm -hmm. and yet somehow – Zerline's going to go Adam Vinatieri on the Patriots? Is that yes. where we're heading? You, you, that's, the, that's the only chance they have a winning, Skip, because they can't afford to let them run the football and Brady throw it because they're living third and short. That's why uh, New England, uh, remember against Kansas City, they were 13 to 19 on third down, and a lot of that was third and one to three. When it's third and 10, you're almost 90% chance you're going to get a pass. Hmm. When it's third and one to three, you have no idea. Hmm. So, I must admit, for once, everything you just said, for me, is scary right. I am with you up to this point. I believe Tom Brady is up against it Sunday in your former hometown of Atlanta. <laughs> and I believe that on paper, the Rams are clearly the better overall football team than the Patriots. And that's why the most respected odds maker in the game, the guy who's, who heads up Bet Chris mm -hmm. on the Sunday night of the championship games, leaned toward his power ranking, which said the Rams were three and a half points better on a neutral field than the Patriots. And that's given that they, you know, the experience is obviously still on the Patriots side with Brady and Belichick. But he was fearful of opening at three and a half. He tried one and a half, and all of a sudden it got bet wildly the other way, all the way to... Patriots by two and a half, just because I believe of the fear of that guy, number 12, who resides in Foxborough. But to me, I'm going to say this one last time ahead of this game. This is the worst supporting cast Tom Brady has ever taken to a Super Bowl. Tom Brady does obviously not have a Brandon Cooks. He had him last year, and then Belichick traded him away. And obviously, he didn't have him for much of the game last year when he threw for 505 because Brandon Cooks in the first quarter left with a concussion. But this year, Tom Brady has no Robert Woods. He is the Rams' leading receiver and I think the most dangerous threat on the field. And I'm not sure how the Patriots are going to be able to cover Robert Woods. And I don't think... Go ahead. Skip, can I ask you a question? Yeah. When you say this is uh, Brady's least talented or uh, supporting cast, are you just comparing it to the Rams or are you comparing it to some of his other offensive teams that he's taken to the Super Bowl? All the because way. Because I can make the case that this, is, this offense is better than the first one that he took. Yeah, but this defense has nothing in common with that oh, first yeah, defense. Oh, yeah, no question. So I'm talking with about the whole... And I'm McGinnis talking about and, the across-the-board yeah, supporting cast because we even oh. go to tight end. I'm, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go to the defense. I'm including okay. the defense in this discussion. Oh, okay, but, but okay. again, when I look at Everett and Tyler Higby just combined, they're better than Gronk. I know Gronk had a couple of big catches late, but he's just this broken-down Frankenstein monster. I just don't know what you can expect from him Sunday against this team. And then now to the defense. It's still basically, basically the same defense that gave up 41 points to the backup quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles in last year's Super Bowl. It is. Basically it is. And it's definitely the same defense that in the fourth quarter 
gave up 24 points to a Patrick Mahomes boy, your guy, <laughs> who had the ball for a grand total of three minutes in that fourth quarter of the AFC Championship game in Kansas City. 24 points in three minutes, that's pretty scary. And that kid, that undrafted rookie who's now starting opposite Stephon Gilmore at corner, you mm -hmm. want to talk about where's Waldo? Sean McVay is going to be playing where's Waldo all day. Where is J.C. Jackson? Is he going to be singled up occasionally? And Robert Woods, trust me, they will go after him all day because in the end, the Chiefs finally started going after J.C. Jackson. And you remember the one drive when he had the two penalties and was yeah. consistently beaten and on that drive. It, and he gave yeah. it a big catch across the middle. Yeah. And then remember what happened in the NFC Championship game. Jared Goff loves Brandon Cooks. He threw him seven balls, mm -hmm. and he caught seven for 104 against the Saints, who are pretty good right. on defense. The Saints are better on defense than New England is to me. And then, obviously, speaking of being up against it, you know Wade Phillips very well. I know him pretty well. Can I, can I go all the way to kryptonite? Has he been Brady's kryptonite? I, I know Tom's had his way occasionally against Wade, but Wade's done some numbers, some, some sort of Rex Ryan-like numbers on Tom mm -hmm. Brady. And I hark back to the last playoff loss for Tom Brady was at Denver in that 2015, obviously that... Um, AFC Championship yeah, game. The, I'm talking about ahead of the Super Bowl, last time they mm -hmm. didn't get to the Super Bowl. And they were all over Brady. He got hit 17 times in that game. As you pointed out earlier this week, they pushed the pocket with, who was it, Malik Jackson? and Malik Jackson yep, and Derek Wolf inside. And Derek Wolf inside. And now you've got two, two of the greatest pocket pushers in the game, the two best, mm -hmm. in Donald and Sue. And what did Wade Phillips say? Well, then I was able to get all kinds of pressure, looping pressure with my edge rushers, Von Miller, DeMarcus Ware, and they had great corners. And Tom Brady had a long, hard day that day. He had a QBR grand total of 37, scale of 0 to 100. He was throwing into the end zone at the end of the game on a two-point conversion try that failed to tie the game at 20 to 20. So it took that much of a defensive effort just to keep the game, you know, put you in a 20 to 18 advantage. But mm -hmm. Tom Brady said on Monday night, this is the best D-line in pro football, and it is, that he's going up against. And he said these are two of the best interceptors in the history of pro football, and they just are. Tlaib and Marcus Peters are really good at ball hawking. They, they're they different are. because one's just a – Marcus Peters, you know, is just a clue or a guesser. Yeah. But when he guesses yeah. right, boy, he can pick six guess right, can he? Yes, and he will. Tlaib, obviously, was a Patriot, so he's actually practiced against Tom. He knows Tom. And I just have a sneaking suspicion they're going to use Tlaib a lot on Julian Edelman, who is obviously Tom's go-to guy, his favorite target. No, that's, that's not a good, that's I, not a good I, matchup for I'm just for thinking, I'm thinking they'll, gonna, they'll try that some just to see if they can eliminate Edelman completely. But go ahead. Go ahead. I don't think that's a good matchup for Tlaib. Tlaib matches up better against big physical receivers. Guys, uh, Antonio Brown, those fast guys, Odell Beckham, they would cause him a problem. Edelman would cause him a problem in the, uh, in the slot because there's so much space and he's so quick. Mm. But i tell you something that need you, you need to watch, Skip. And Dominic and Sue and Aaron Donald, they like to swim a lot because they like to get off the ball quick and try to get upfield and get to your quarterback. The thing that the Patriots do very well is that they punish you for one of your weaknesses. You got to be careful swimming because you swim out of one hole and here come the Patriots pulling a guy with a running back behind him right in the hole that you just vacated from. So I think you need to see less swimming from Indominus and Sue and Aaron Donald, but they've had such great success this season. Aaron Donald led the league in sacks with 20 and a half. There's a reason. He jumps off the ball, gets on an edge, and he gets up feeling in a hurry. That could be to their disadvantage in a game like this, you're probably going to have to play it a lot more straight up, that right down the middle. And I know it's going to take you a little—it'll uh, take you a little longer to get to the quarterback, but you won't leave the gaping holes in the run game that the Patriots can take advantage of. Okay, and yet what I thought Wade did the best at New Orleans in their championship game was. Mm -hmm. What do the Patriots gash you with the most? With the little swing passes out of the backfield yes. to James White or yes. Cordero or even to Burkhead. And I thought Wade did a nice job using Sue and Fowler to go after the back. If the back swung, at one point, a couple times, Sue just went after Kamara, right. just went and hit him. And it knocked Drew Brees off rhythm for a second where he had to look away and try to go upfield with it. And it just shook up the rhythm of the offense. So I think they'll do that quite a bit. And so my bottom line is Brady's greatest challenge in a Super Bowl will be this Sunday. 
I believe if he wins it, it will be his greatest achievement. And I believe he will win it because I believe he's been on a mission all season long to, to get even with what happened in last year's Super Bowl thanks to Bill Belichick. I think he's, he's been on a mission to get even with his head coach for not playing Malcolm Butler in last year's Super Bowl because Tom Brady had a spectacular game. All-time playoff record, 505, 33 points, the most uh, Super Bowl losers ever scored. And he, as you say, again and again, took the L, I think in large part because Malcolm Butler somehow got doghouse for the game and didn't play a single snap. And I think it really motivated almost a la Deflategate Tom Brady through this year. He's back where he started last year, and he wants to right the wrong of the loss to the Eagles because he thinks, I believe, that they were better than the Eagles, that they should have won that game. Mm -hmm. so, so now he'll be on a mission to just simply win in spite of Belichick's defense, to outscore Sean McVay, and I believe he will. And I think Sean McVay will be able to play Madden against Belichick's defense while Tom Brady will be playing chess against Wade Phillips. Mm. And I believe chess will beat Madden in this game because slowly but surely, Tom Brady will figure out how to pick apart the Rams' defense in many mm -hmm. uh, sort of unforeseen little ways. Here, there, to, to your point, some run plays, some pass plays we're not expecting. I expect Philip Dorsett to be more of a factor than he has been. I think he's going to get deep a couple of times and Tom will have just enough time to hit him deep. And I believe that over time, he will win the game of keep away. Not like he did against Patrick Mahomes, but I think the Patriots will go 35 to 25 minutes in time of possession. And do you realize through those first two playoff games, New England is 20 of 33 on third down against the Chargers and the Chiefs. 20 of 33, that's 61%. Well, you to 50% if you want to win this game on Sunday. Well, you better. Yeah, if, if you allow them to convert 60% or as, like you said, 13 of 19 at Kansas City. You're losing. Brady's going to lose that. So, to me, I have never seen Tom Brady any better than he was against the Chargers and the Chiefs. I think he's playing at the highest combined mental, physical level we've ever seen him play okay. quarterback. And I think that's the guy you're going to see. I think the guy you're going to see is the guy who walked into the facility a couple of weeks back, according to NFL <laughs> Network, and said to nobody in particular, I'm the <laughs> baddest man on the planet, except he said the baddest MF on the planet, right? <laughs> and Yes, he did. That's the guy who's Michael Jordan in sheep's clothing. That's the guy who's a cold-blooded assassin disguised as the corny dad down the street. Mm -hmm. That's the guy you're going to see. Psycho Tom's going to emerge once again on Sunday 